Paul, in trying to understand what is the purpose of life in the structure of reality, I know the Christian exhortation is toward salvation. Now, I can't tell you I, sitting here, feel a need to be saved. Perhaps that word has had certain connotations mm. that, uh, that uh, are, are not necessarily uh, particularly attractive because in today's world. But putting aside the connotations, what is the concept, the deep concept mm. of salvation? Mm. Well, salvation is a very wide concept. It's about wholeness. It's about healing. It's about the bringing of potentials to fulfillment. It's the way that God is working in the world. God is a God of salvation and is working with the whole of created reality to bring it to this wholeness, uh, to overcome the self-destructive tendencies within it, to heal the broken relationships. So that's the Christian idea of salvation. It's a very wide concept of the way that God works within God's creation. Uh, a narrower concept is that of atonement. That is that this salvation is possible because of the healing of relationships and the healing of relationships to the life of a particular person a Jew in the first century, Jesus of Nazareth. And that this whole wide uh, cosmic activity of salvation is deeply bound up with and somehow dependent upon this particular event of a healing of relationships there in that particular historic instance. And that's because God emptied God's self into a person and suffered and died and, mm -hmm. and, and went through that process. Well, Christians have had a whole um, number of uh, models and pictures in which they've tried to understand how salvation can be dependent upon this particular act of atonement. Sometimes they thought of it with the, the image of a battlefield, that it is a, a victory over hostile powers. Sometimes they've taken an image from the temple, that it's a, a sacrifice which somehow wipes out what is unclean and contaminating in life. Or they thought of it from the life of the family, that it's love which is transformative and which can change people's lives. Or sometimes they've taken an image from uh, the story of an oppressed people, that God redeems them from slavery. So, or sometimes from the law court, actually, that, um, that God, as a just judge, acquits those who in fact um, have done a deep wrong, and yet out of sheer gift, God acquits them. So in different ways, these images, these models have been taken to try and understand how it is that this wide act of salvation of God is dependent upon this particular event. But fundamental to all of them are ideas of forgiveness, of reconciliation, and as you have just suggested, the the deep immersion of God into human life at this point in suffering love. Let me yeah. ask how uh, exclusive or broad-based this event is, assuming it's right, and let me give you that for the moment. So the application of it can apply to, at its narrowest, those people who affirmatively and with deep conviction and with deep uh, a commitment, accept Jesus or accept this in their life and go through whatever procedures are necessary to achieve that. Broadening out would be Christians in general who were sort of uh, attend church and uh, part of the Christian culture, and but not necessarily a deep feeling of the of the of the deep theology of it. And then broadening out further might be uh, a babies within the Christian tradition who died, unfortunately, from disease at a young age before they mm -hmm. had any cognizance. And broadening out further, we can go to other religions that are similar to Christianity in their mind, maybe Judaism or Islam. Mm -hmm. And then broadening out further, we have uh, uh, Eastern religions and Buddhism and Hinduism. Broadening out further, maybe uh, uh, folk religions and, and no religions, and then all my atheist friends. And then finally, I get to other planets in the universe mm -hmm. with other potential mm -hmm. sentient life. So where in this mm -hmm. spectrum mm -hmm. does that mm -hmm. process apply? Mm -hmm. Well, God, as a good creator, has always been entering into the suffering of God's creation. 
what we're saying about this particular event is that there is nowhere where God journeys further. This is the deepest point of immersion into suffering, alienation, forsakenness, and death. God takes this into God's self. So wherever people encounter God, they encounter a God in whose heart is this cross. So whether people know the story or not, whether they are coming to conscious faith in Christ or not, they are encountering a God who has this event of complete desolation, but which God overcomes uh, in life. They're encountering a God who has this event within God's self, and therefore it is transformative for them. Now, God wants, of course, people to cooperate with God in God's work of bringing life into the world. And so we need to tell the story. But it doesn't mean the story is not powerful and the event within that story is not powerful to all people uh, throughout the world. Uh, and um, also, if one tries to think in a cosmic way, perhaps beyond the boundaries of this world itself. So it is not a requirement that even though I know that event, to believe in that event. And it is not a requirement that even somebody even know that event for potentially that one event, that God incarnation in a human being and that whole experience and suffering to apply to them. Well, well, Christians think that knowing the story and trusting in the God who is at the heart of this story um, Lighten, lightens up the whole of life and opens up all sorts of new potentials and possibilities for relationships with others. It's a dynamic story which has the power to transform. So it's important to tell the story and to know the story and to work with the God who is the leading character um, in the story. But it doesn't mean that if you don't, that God is somehow helpless and that um, you are not in fact living in a world which is um, indwelling this reality of God. So it is not a question of you must believe this, know it and believe it in order to in order not to be lost in some way. It's not, it's not that. Uh, and it, it's, it's not that uh, you uh, can't um, live your life in a good way without believing that. But it is the fact that anyone in any capacity who is going to uh, reconcile to God and perhaps be in a future life will do so through this event. There is no other path to God other than th through this event, whether you know it or not. Well, this is the deepest point of God's entrance into creation. In that sense, it's a critical and crucial event. Um, so yes, uh, all life does come through this event, though I've been wanting to say that God does enter human life in many ways um, throughout the whole of history. But here there is an intensity of that engagement, that deep participation in human life, uh, because of the nature of the person involved within this, who is a person who has opened his life completely to God in obedience. I'm talking about the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, be because then of that complete identity of God with a particular human being, and the complete disclosure of the love of God and the self-giving of God in that particular life. This is a critical event within the life of God, the life of God, the Holy Trinity. And therefore, that when, whenever life comes in the world, it is through this event, whether or not people consciously know it or not.